Welcome back to the workshop. So last time we managed to get this Y-axis moving, we got the ball screw connected up, got this drilled and tapped, and that moves really nicely. So this time, a bit again to the Y-axis. Uh, quite a few videos ago we made this little adapter bracket, uh, cut it out on the CNC machine, so we've got the bridge bracket and we've got our two drilled and tapped holes there, and that goes onto there. And the idea is the ball nut goes into there and then the ball screw for the uh, Y-axis goes onto there. But a couple of problems. One is the ball nut is the wrong way around. Well, that's fine. We can turn it around. And the second one is uh, the flange sticks out too far up here and crucially at the bottom. So we need to make some modifications. Let's get started. Okay, yeah, it's not too hot. It's quite warm, but not too hot because we've got plastic parts in here. So I wanted to be a little bit careful. I could have taken it apart, but I thought if I just went slowly, it was going to be fine. Now, I've probably edited this together into one very short take, but um, I took gaps in between and let it cool down. So, yeah, that's, that's come out okay. Now, there's a little bit more to take off. That was going to be my rough cut. So I think we'll do the same the other side. I have marked a line, but because these have hardened, it hasn't really taken very well, which is why I'm using the grinder to cut it. So we'll get rough that side in and then either I might be able to use the grinder uh, and just take that surface back down so it's pretty flat and virtually flush with the barrel. That's essentially what we want to do. Or I may try an end mill on the CNC machine and try and machine that down. But I think, even well, we'll try it even. They're pretty hard on the outside. Oh, yes. What about on the inside? Oh, I can mark it. Okay, so it's... Yeah, it's only case hardened, which is what you'd expect. So yeah, an end mill, just lightly, a very small one at high speed would probably take that back to flat. But let's rush, uh, roughly cut the other side and then we'll see what we've got and decide which way we're gonna do it. Let's just talk a little bit about this grinder. Um, I've had it quite a long time, as you can see, I haven't used it a huge amount yet. Just those odd little jobs. And it's really handy if you've just got a little bolt to uh, just cut to length or whatever, something like that. It takes these same battery packs as my drill. So this is the 18 volt Dewalt system. Uh, the only thing to say about it is if you're doing a heavy grinding job for a long period, um, you know, it really eats these batteries. So these are three amp power. So when you read around, a lot of people say, yeah, go for the bigger one. I think it's a 4.2 or 4.5. So yeah, if you're going to use it quite a lot, probably go for the bigger one, but I had these anyway because I interchanged them with my drill and um, I went through two of these to grind this off. Now this did take quite a long time, you're probably talking 20 minutes continuous grinding, uh, but just bear that in mind. But they're so handy, just, you know, it's just in the drawer, grab it, you haven't got the cable in the way, 
And uh, the only thing to just, I guess, say from a safety point of view, you have this little um, switch here. So on a lot of grinders, there's kind of a dead man switch where you have to sort of click something and then go. This one, as long as it's in that position, you know, it's, it's, it's live, it will, it will easily start on the trigger and then that's the safety and then it won't. So it's maybe a little less safe, but apart from that, I yeah, really like it. it, takes your regular discs. I've got these kind of metal cutting discs on here to go through that, the really thin ones. Uh, yeah, really recommended. Um, nice not to have the cord in the way, anyway. Right, I'll just bring you close up here because you might be able to just about see in the light. There's a the little line that I scribed just about, about there and there. So we're, we're very close to that now. Now this is case hardened, so when I did that with my height gauge, I think it was about six millimeters I had to take off from the flat part of the flange, almost down to this cylindrical bit. Um, it barely made a mark because this is obviously hardened, so that's why I had to use the grinder to take it off, or take most of it off anyway. Uh, but what you can see in there, I ran a file over it, the inner part is relatively soft, so I think we'll be okay with an end mill, a carbide end mill. We'll use a small one, maybe three or four millimeters, and then we can run at higher speed and uh, we'll get this leveled up. Now the only thing to, or we'll bring it into, machine it back down to those lines, the only thing to be aware of is I've got to re-clock it against those two, those holes there because in principle you could machine it at any angle and it'll make sure it's reasonably level. It's not critical, it's more for appearance and make sure we don't foul when it goes in, but uh, that's the only thing I've got to watch out for. I'm kind of not quite sure I'm going to do that. I might turn some little pins that go in there and then I can read the height off the bed so I'll make sure this height and this height are the same because there's no reference otherwise, because obviously this is rough ground and this is rough ground. But uh, that's the next operation, so we'll go to the uh, CNC machine and we'll set that up. Oh, one more thing. Uh, obviously, I'm only going to now be bolting on these two fixings here, rather than the complete six fixings. Um, but, you know, it's, it's not a milling machine. Is it a milling machine? <laughs> it's not a milling machine, and it won't be, okay. Um, it means that these are only used to position the XY table, you know, relatively light load, then you lock the axes off and that holds it in position, so there's not really going to be any duty on these as such during the cutting, so I think it'd be absolutely fine. Right, let's go and get those dialed in and machined. Okay, so we've got the ball nut set up in the vise here. We've got it between two V blocks to hold that nice round surface. We've tapped that down so it's nice and square. This is square to the CNC machine. And then I've just got this nut and bolt through here with a washer just to hold the inner collar in place, just to make sure it doesn't come out because that's stopping the balls coming out. Uh, then in here we've got two little M5 bolts and I've just wrapped some tape around them so they're a reasonable snug fit. Not super tight, but a reasonable fit in there, and then they're pushed home. So essentially, they're my two kind of crew dowel pins. And then what I've been doing is using the height gauge here and just touching off on the top of this surface, and then coming around here and touching off on the top of this surface. There we are, and getting them pretty close, and then just adjusting it and tapping it in. And now I've got it tight and square. So what we need to do now is take this surface down here till it's almost flush with the barrel there. Within half a millimetre I think will be okay. Just got to make sure I don't machine through these hardened blocks here. Uh, then just before we do that, now we've got that set up, um, we'll just tape off this area down here, just stop any of the swarf going inside the bearing there. And then, uh, yeah, I think we're, then we can machine it.
Yeah, it looks pretty good. So um, for a start, I touched off here and then I've brought this down to within 0.1 millimeters of that, so it's almost flush. So I think that'll be uh, plenty of clearance. So that should be now pretty much parallel to these two bolts. So what we need to do, we'll turn it round. Now I haven't got an expanding um, set of parallels, so that'd be great just to pick up off that surface on the underside. We'll see if I've got something close. If not, um, I'll just have to use the method of touching off these two bolts to get it level again. And then these two sides should be reasonably parallel to each other. Again, one of them's just for clearance uh, to the main plates, and then the other one's clearance to the table. So not super critical, but there isn't too much space in there, so I want to get it as close as I can you know, within practical limits. So let's spin this round. Uh, I'll set it up again, and then we can machine the other side. And now you might have noticed when I was machining that, there were quite a few sparks, so it is obviously cutting around the edge where it's hardened. Towards the center, it was okay. Um, you know, but it's doing okay. It's, it's cutting through, and um, it's not wearing out the carbide too much. Um, I, I know that because it's, uh, it's, it's gone to the, pretty much the right depth there. So let's spin this round, set it up, and then we'll cut the other side. Okay, there it is. I've just given it a little clean up with a file through the holes. I'm just taking all the rough edges off and that looks pretty nice. So next thing to do, uh, let's just make sure it fits on the drill press bracket. Okay, so here's the bracket we made in an early video. So hopefully that will go into there. Obviously the inner will come out and we'll put the ball screw in, but we want to just see Okay, in fact, it's, it's very close, I think, what will probably happen. So that's loose at the moment, and if we do this up, still loose. Oh, it's just, so it's loose. It's tight, so it's actually just flush with the base. I was hoping to take a tiny bit more off than that, but I think that's going to work. Well, that will give it extra security, so that's no bad thing. Okay, so uh, let's get these screws in. Uh, so these are M5. Okay, looking good. Pleased with that. One last thing while we're here. Um, there's no clearance here to put a standard uh, grease nipple on here. It'll stick out way too far. So I've just cut this grub screw down. So uh, just for now, just stop too much dirt getting in it. I'll just put that in. It seems to come to a natural sort of tight spot. So I don't think we need any thread lock on it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, very pleased, looks good. Okay, so the next job was to put a keyway into the x-axis ball screw. So did that in the usual way, just like I did last time. So I got it set up in the CNC machine. I got it in a, a collet there, just to hold it. And then touched off the sides and then machined the keyway in the normal way. Now the only problem was um, I machined a four millimeter keyway in there, but I wasn't happy with the fit. It was ever so slightly too large. You know, it wasn't a nice, drop-in fit. I just uh, went a little bit too far. So uh, no problem, I've just opened it up to 5mm, taken the depth down a bit more and then just made a new key in 5mm keyway material and uh, much happy with that fit. It's a, it, it grabs it and it'll hold it in there so if you turn it around it won't fall out under gravity but you can, he says, <laughs> you can get it out again. Yeah, so much happy with that. Um, only thing is, uh, the hand wheel, so the hand wheel that looks like this, obviously it's got a 4mm keyway in it, so I need to open that out to 5 so I've got this brooch here which I've used quite often because I think it's a 12mm 
So if I was doing a keyway in a 12 millimeter, I tend to put a five millimeter key in anyway, so maybe it's no bad thing. So all I need to do now, as you can see down there, is just run the brooch down there in the press and just open that out to the right size. And then we're back on track. Right, so I can't quite get it all the way in because the stud's in the way. I could take that out, but I prefer this to be tight. Now it's a little bit offset there, but uh, I think it'll be okay because we'll just take some small bites. Put some oil on it. And because it's cast iron, it's cutting quite nicely. All I've got to do is catch it when it comes out the bottom. pass. So now I'll just use some of these shims. Just pack out behind the brooch and just work our way up until we've got the finished size. So there's our keyway cut and cleaned up, so let's put it together. So the first thing we need to do is put the ball screw through there. And the spacer. Hopefully it will fit. Might be a bit snug, but that's okay. It's not, it's not quite gone home. Bit wobbly on the wheel, but there we go. That's not... uh, haven't fully gone home. There we go. Right, that's another bit done. Okay, so the next thing to do is to make an adapter plate that goes on the end of here. So this is too thin to mount this ball nut on directly so there'll be a plate on there so we'll pick up on some more tap some ho more holes in that and then uh, that will hold that bearing block on so the part itself uh, looks like this so you can see that bridge bit there is to match the bridge in there and then uh, that screws onto this and then it's got some tapped holes uh, here uh, which you can put the bearing block onto so to make that piece there I just found this old bit of my scrap bin. Now this used to be, I just can't quite remember exactly what it did, but it was on one of my CNC machines, maybe Mark II, uh, something around the Z-axis, some, some kind of adjustable. And you can see I machined it down, so it's 10 millimeters, which is perfect, exactly what we need. And then that's roughly gonna be the size of the part, so it will fit on there. So we'll clamp it down, put a bit of spoil board underneath, and drill those holes, and then we can cut the profile out uh, should be pretty straightforward. So let's set this up on the CNC machine and then we'll cut it out. Uh, ah, yeah. 
Well, first of all, we've got to clear this little lot away. Uh, I think with machining, you spend half your time setting up all the fixtures. So uh, let me get rid of this, put that, put that away, get this set up, and then we'll bring you back. Okay, so I've got it bolted down now. So we've got our spoil board. As you can see, I've packed it out at the four corners with blockers, just so it can't slide because uh, if you're doing some heavy cutting and this moves on you, because uh, you're only clamping it under wood, um, then you lose position, you don't want that. So I've packed that out just for a bit of extra security. And then as you can see, I've got it screwed down here. So we'll zero the machine, bring it over, zero it somewhere over here on the work and make sure we can fit it on. Uh, then we'll just drill out these holes and then I can put some screws in some of these holes and then when I cut the outline and then finish it, it'll hold itself in position and I can take the rest of the material away. So let's get the code loaded up. Um, now this is my first time using the new UC CNC software. So uh, let's have a look and see how we go. If I do mess it up, I've probably got enough to make another one on here, but hopefully we won't get that far and it will work first time. So let's get the data stick loaded in and load up the code. Okay, before we take the part off there, I thought I may as well, now it's clamped down, uh, drill and tap out the M5 holes. This is a coarse thread. This is standard thread M5 by 0.8. So I've just piloted it out using a 4.2 millimeter drill. A handy way to get pretty close on your pilot sizes is to subtract the pitch. So for metric anyway, if you subtract the pitch from the diameter, so 5 minus 0.8 is 4.2, so then that's your pilot hole and here it is 
is all cleaned up. So I've deburred all the edges, cleaned out all the tap holes, and given it a little bit of Scotch Brite. So it's ready to go. So uh, that goes on the front of here. Now I've still got to drill and tap the holes in the right places. And then this, I think the bearing block went upside down, if I remember right. And then that will go through there and bolt on to those four holes through there. Actually, it will be, I think, is it like that? Or is it like that? I can't remember. Oh, it must be that way. Yeah, that's it. It goes upside down. So that will go onto there. Okay, so I've just got to work out the best way to do this next step. So I could put the ball screw into the ball nut that's on the, on the drill press at the moment, and that will give us a position, but it might not be centered, you know, it might be off at an angle. So I think I could do that. Uh, I'll make what we do then, we bolt, bolt this onto there, get that nice and square, um, get the ball screw into the ball nut, and then we'll just bring the two together and then use the ball screw to dictate where this wants to be. And then we'll punch through, mark those holes, It'll be these ones, won't it? And then drill and tap those. Yeah, I think that's the right order. So we'll take this apart, get the ball screw mounted, and then get this mounted onto there. Yep. And this went. I just went to put the five screws in and the whole pattern in here was slightly wider than the whole pattern in here so not quite sure I drew this a long time ago maybe I referenced a bearing block with a slightly different hole pattern and uh, so basically what I've just had to do is just I thought these were hardened because I've got a really nice finish but they were okay to drill so just open it up a little bit with the drill and uh, now we're fine so um, yeah always Check the actual hardware you've got. I might have messed up in CAD, I don't, I don't know. Anyway, we're back on track. That's pretty level. Okay. We'll adjust it once it's actually on the drill press and get it all lined up. All right. good now we're going to have a little bit of a problem here so this is a 10 millimeter plane shaft on here and I need it to go in this way now when I took it off this bearing or the ball nut sorry was the other way around so what I've done is just counterboard this end to 10 millimeters to accept that so I could take it off this end I think is still counterboard to 8 millimeters which means now I want to turn it the other way I won't be able to get that into there so let me just open it up Just show you what I mean. Just be a bit careful now. So this tube is stopping all the balls falling out. So in this end we've got an 8mm counter bore and this end we've got a 10, which I think means I can get that onto there. And then feed it on but that's the wrong way around so that's as I took it off and the other way which is what I really want to do yeah that's an eight so I think what we're gonna to have to do is put it on this way the wrong way around then I can take this tube over to the lathe counter ball this end to ten uh, or hang on no, uh, is that right? Yeah, I'm gonna have to count. I was thinking I might be able to, when this is off, turn it round, but then, uh, no, then I can't get this off again. Right, yeah, back to plan A. 
So I've got these here just in case any of the balls fall out. It might slow them down and hopefully they won't roll off the edge. Well, hopefully even better than that. We won't, uh, they won't fall out at all. So let's put this on the wrong way around. So I'll feed that onto there. This is always a bit nerve wracking just when it starts. Just keep pressure on it. Feels like it's got it. Okay. Okay, yeah, you can see I've got ten counterboard in that side and only eight in that. So yeah, I think Yeah, I've got a counterball this side, haven't I? Right, back in a minute. Okay, now we should be able to put that on from either end. Perfect, right. Just loosen these bolts just to allow me a little bit more wiggle room because it needs to be lined up. Let's get the thread there. Just put the end stopper back on there. I might make a larger one now. Now I can see how much room I've got. Um, and then it will definitely hit against this bit rather than going onto the seal. And we'll see. See how I feel about that. That's a pretty easy modification. Right, now the th next thing I've been doing is this one's loose and this one's... I've just got it tight enough so that I can manually move... Yeah, I can move the ball screw into alignment. Um, but wherever it goes, it then just stays in that position because what we're going to do is use the end plate up against the table just to get that position right and get it nice and square and this will allow it to um, pull up square to that. And then when it's done, we'll slide the table all the way off and I can tighten these up with the table all the way over here. So next thing to do is get the table on. I'll just put some oil on that. It's the tricky bit. Oh, crumbs, what's that here? forgotten about that. Um, if you can see into there it's hitting on the underside of that casting. Yes I remember now this needed to be relieved ever so slightly. I mean it's not it's not much. If I can bring you, get you a good shot down there. It's pretty close. Just needs maybe a millimetre taken off. Right, we'll take the table off, get it on the CNC machine, and machine, machine some of this back. So I've taken just a pass just down the edge, and that's now at the, the correct depth at this end and that end. I'm just a bit worried. 
I knew it was going to take some off the middle because this is kind of raised as an extra piece here. Um, it's not easy to measure, but obviously the dovetail in the centre, or the T-slot, sorry, in the centre, is going to have a thickness to it. I'm just worried. I might be taking off too much, but I've got much choice because it's got a clear. So what I might do is just take um, a cut all the way through the middle there, which is at the correct height, and then right in the centre, just drill a hole all the way through to the other side, and then I can have a look and see how thick the wall is. I mean, what I can do about it, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it's one of those. Okay. I mean, as long as I don't go all the way through, even two or three mils, probably okay. That would have been nice to leave a bit more. So, while we're here now, let's uh, see how thick the material is. Take it from there. Okay, so the good news is I've gone down to the correct depth there, that's my zero if you like, and um, I haven't punched a hole through, so that's that's something. I've decided not to drill a hole all the way through, uh, it's only going to get swarf in it when you're using the machine and I drop onto the ball screw, so I guess I could block it up with something, you know, a grub screw or something, but yeah, that's what it is. Uh, as you can see, I'm going to take quite a lot off, but it is... See, it starts there and then it's raised quite a lot, but on the underside we've got the uh, the T-slot and it's the bottom of the T-slot, so I'm just worried if I've got anything big and heavy ever on there and I'm pulling up into that T-slot, it might bow the centre slightly. Maybe I'm worried over nothing because we've got all the periphery and we've got ribs and things. So, yeah. Well, it's got to come out, otherwise it's not going to clear, so... Uh, I think we'll, we'll side mill, it's pretty heavy going just cutting trenches so we'll just side mill down the side here and go back and forth and take it away until we've got all the clearance. Well that took a little while but we got there, so it's left quite a nice finish. Now just in case I've gone all the way out to these angled bit here, just in case uh, I haven't got enough clearance. And then seeing down this side, taking it all the way out. So uh, it does feel a bit thin in the middle but there's not much I can do about it. I needed the clearance. Um, I think if I did it again I'd be tempted to countersink the ball nut a little bit, maybe even two or three millimetres into a pocket, I think I would have still had clearance to the ball screw um, and then I wouldn't have had to relieve this quite as much but you know, it's only a drilling machine, it's not a milling machine so hopefully it'll be strong enough and uh, most of the time I think I'll use the outer two T-slots anyway. I'm just a bit worried if I pull up really hard only on the two centre or only on the centre T-slot, maybe there's a chance it will crack this, I don't know. We'll see. Anyway, it's done now, so we'll take it off here and we'll put it on the XY table and uh, then we can get the bracket, which end is it, that end, bracket lined up and we can tap through the holes and we'll get our ball screw mounted. Okay, let's see if it fits. That's where it got stuck last time. Okay. 
hey. Nice. Okay, right now. Let's wind that in. So make it as short as possible. plate on the end and start marking this up. Okay, here's our bearing block. And now you can see it's not quite square, but that's okay because we left the bornet screw slightly loose. So we can get it squared up. All right, I'll check that's nice and level and then we'll put the, the punches through there and transfer punch those holes. So it's, I've tried to clamp it but it's got sloped sides and there's not really enough area where you do want to clamp it then it's in, in the way. So I think we'll do the same trick I did before just to get it accurate lined up. Just punch one, take it off, drill and tap that, get a screw in there and then uh, that'll hold it in place for the other ones. So, okay, let's mark that. Try not to move it. Trying to get it level. Okay, it looks good. It's slightly under flush. All right, let's tap out these three. Just opened up these holes another half millimeter just so I can get it dialed in exactly where it wants to sit. Okay, that's good. Okay, next is the spacer. Finally, the nut. I actually got the handle as well, haven't I? Almost finally, the nut. So 
wobbly. Mm. I think I might make my own handles or sleeve that. That's pretty rubbish, isn't it? Right, let's give it a go then. Oh, that feels good. See how far across we can go. How much further can we go? Oh, about to there. There we are. Okay, let's see how much travel we've actually got then. So if that's as far across as it can go, that's about level with that edge. So we'll just call that yeah on the edge and then go somewhere around there. Yeah, it's the bornet block just hits that. So that is. Twenty, somewhere about there. Well, I suppose technically we're going to go to that edge if we've got a part clamped, because we can't go any more that way. About one thirty, maybe one forty. Because it's quite a long. Um, Keyless chuck, you could get a shorter one with a key on it, give you a little bit more. Okay, let's zero it there, let's see what we got. About there, yep, yeah, that's it. Uh, about 140 millimeters. I'm really happy now I've got both axes working. It's uh, took a bit more effort than I thought, but there's always problems when you're doing things for the first time. Yeah, I've forgotten I needed to machine the back of that out. You can see here, here's the T-slot here. And it does feel a bit thin, but yeah, it's what it is. Um, yeah, that feels really nice. Shame about the wobbly handle. Yeah, uh, maybe I'll make my own one day. Who knows, or maybe just turn this one down so it's actually concentric, because I don't need a lot of this. But there we go. That feels nice and smooth. I put some oil on the ways just before I assembled it and that's feeling really good. Okay, nice. Okay, that about wraps it up for this video. I'm really pleased with progress on that. That feels really good to get that working. That's a real milestone ticked off. And it was good to see yeah, the Z-axis readout as well. Uh, if you remember, I put the DRO on the back of the column there so it records the Z-height. And that makes me think, the next thing I need to do is to get the DROs on here on the X and Y and get some custom brackets made up. So maybe we'll have a look at those in the next video. So all that remains to be said is thank you very much for watching, thank you for following along, hope you're enjoying it and see you next time. Hold on, I forgot to tighten the ball nut up. Right, I've just taken those screws out there, so hopefully, this will come away. Yeah. And I tighten these up. Push it back. Right, now you can roll the rest of the film.